All right, well, let's pivot to let's let's go to older wide receivers. We just talked about rookie, uh, the, the the rookie class that just came in against the 23 class. Let's see. Let's talk about the older wide receivers worth a first. Um, you want to start at the bottom with the older guys or start with the little bit younger, older guys? Surprise me. All right. Let, let's go. Cooper Cup worth a first, um, you know. Obviously down and injured. Stafford says seemingly he's coming back, um, which, you know, this is a league winner. You know, I can't imagine that 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 he's he's going to take too many steps back. Um, we don't know exactly what's going to take place. They need offensive line help. Um, but is Cooper Cup going to be in any way, shape or form worth a first for you um, by rookie draft time? Yeah, I I would move a if I were a playoff team and I you know I'm sitting 109 110 I would I I would consider that and again it just like in a, in a bubble you know and my my tier breaks at 108 let's say um like where's my man Tank going where's he get <laughs> where, where where if if I knew Tank Bigsby goes in the second round of the NFL draft, even late second, like, uh, uh, but no cup is certainly worth a first. I'm just trying to figure out. I have him equal to that one Oh seven, one Oh eight. Uh, but you're, you're looking at a 29 year old receiver going into his age 30 season. I, I would move one ten or later for him right now. Yeah. You know, I I would I would tend to agree that if I have a, seemingly a window right here, I just got into the championship or was right outside knocking on the door to the championship, and it seems like I never like to count your chickens before they hatch. Mm-hmm. But you know the 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 two three year run windows in dynasty certainly can be fleeting if it's especially if it's if it's a good competitive league where you know the talents kind of spread out a little bit. Um, you know you certainly have leagues where it's not, but for the most part, a lot of my leagues are. So when you get those, you know, windows, you got to take advantage of them. And if somebody's ready to get off a cup and you want to try to ride, you know, you won this year or got close or got you cash this year in some way, shape or form, you know, I agree. I'd be fine with that. Um, You know, I was, I was thinking that there would be more regression than there was from Cooper cup coming into this year. And maybe going doubling down on that is the wrong approach, but I mean, he did, there didn't look like any, you know, any real problems. And you wonder if, if the, if the, you know, Rams were in better, a better situation mm-hmm. that maybe you might have seen a little Cooper Cup at the end of the season here. But all right, how about how about Devonte Adams? Seems like there might be some questions. A car kind of moving forward. How does that situation play out? Is Devonte Adams? worth the first for you if what if you know let's just maybe car stays maybe tom brady comes in who knows um what what do you think Devonte adams is worth here i i think he's another guy we get two to three years of really solid maybe not at that point elite production but still you know you're hoping that your late first gives you two to three elite years like you would be ecstatic sure and and maybe elite's the wrong word, but you know, uh, top low end wide receiver one, high end wide receiver two numbers. Like you would be absolutely thrilled. I think people kind of lose lose that concept and the idea of well, if I'm spending a first round pick on a player, especially if it's a, a player that I'm drafting, well, they're they're sealing the potential. It's all unknown, so it's exciting. There's that opportunity that they're going to go out and just be the next, you know. Amon Ross St. Brown, you know, because he he was going to the mid to late second yeah. in rookie drafts. And I think there's certain players, they set that unrealistic expectation. So this is a long way of saying I, I would also spend a late first on Devontae Adams if the opportunity presented itself. Yeah, again, got it. Got to be. Now, the, the, now for ahead. both Cup and Adams, let me say it's it's in the situation, Casey, that you mentioned. You were you were knocking on the door. You were you're in a situation and position that you feel you can compete. Let's say I have a team that it's a younger build, and I happen to have the 102, 107, 110 because I acquired some of those other picks. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be a little bit more hesitant at this point in time yeah. to 
take one of those later first and move it for a player like Cup or Adams because there's really not much that can happen between now and May that their value goes up at all. They're right. still older. Their 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 situation, even if it changes, like you said, mentioned uh, the car situation. He gets benched for the Raiders. Who's their quarterback next year? I I don't know if it changes Adams' value all that much. And then Cup, you have to assume Stafford's coming back. He's really not going to change value wise. So the, there still is a little bit of a gray area in terms of where and when I'm moving those picks. Yeah, I mean, and and you know the, these older guys. Uh, dynasty is everybody wants under 26 uh so so the you know the any t- had this year that was ready to compete the value you could get on older guys it was insane um and you know i, I don't even know yeah you probably got to pay a first for these guys and that that would be a little later but i think how, how you kind of summed it up is is the perfect way uh to to kind of wrap up devon and yeah you know i'm s- same sort of vein as cup but I'd be more willing to push the button on cup than, than Adams. I guess I would be a little more. Uh, I'm not sure what exactly is going to go on there and the quarterback wise, but I just don't think that you get rid of Derek. Like who are you going to get? If you're, if you're, if you're not, it's either Tom Brady or Derek Carr to me uh, over right. there, and, unless you're just going to go right in the, into the shitter and you're trying to get into the Caleb Williams sweepstakes or something like you can, I'm not saying Derek Carr is great, but like, there's a there if you got rid of Derek Carth, the amount of people that would line up to get there because they know how bad it's been for you know however long Jets, Commanders, Indianapolis, you know, whoever, you know, just there's half the league needs a fucking quarterback. So right. um, uh, right. and, and one thing too, like like a cup or a an Adams or even going down a little bit further, a Hopkins or an Evans, Keenan Allen. I think there's going to be an opportunity here as the offseason progresses that if you have a younger player like, you know, maybe a, a Sky Moore in a second plus a small piece, maybe that opportunity if somebody, you know, they, you know, this manager and they like to blow it up, you know, during the offseason, if they weren't contending, you might be able to get these guys at even more of a discount than this late first that we're talking about. So I would just look to. Oh, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I right now, I don't even like Mike Evans. Nobody wants Mike Evans. Mike Evans is right, dead. Right, right. I've been trying to sell Mike Evans on a, on a team that's, that's out to playoff contenders or whatever for a while. And nobody like, they won't touch him for a second plus. So, you know, Keenan, like, I, I think there's a very limited threshold of older wide receivers that could even fetch that. I think you could, I think you could absolutely buy those guys for a second plus something cheaper than Sky Moore even. Right, right. Um not that Sky Moore has done anything at all to warrant any value and that was a that was a sort of a miss. Yeah, I liked almost Sky Moore and, and the fact that he went to the Chiefs kind of blinds you, you know, a little bit there but um no, I think I think you can get those guys for a little cheaper. Yeah, Mike uh, Evans hasn't scored a touchdown in almost 3 months, October 2nd. <laughs> not and I know he had he had one or two called back, but yeah. We don't get fantasy points for that. All right. Well, since since we just touched on the older other two older guys that I had that I've held to help were holding in a little bit higher regard were Tyreek and Stefan Diggs. But so if, if we were in on Cup and Adams, I would assume does does do do Tyreek and Diggs climb up a tier for you as you know as far as what you'd be willing to trade for since yeah. you're getting an extra year year and a half. Yeah, Diggs and Tyreek as it stands today. Uh, Addison and JSN, we, we could talk about that depending on my team situation. But beyond that, at the wide receiver position, and I love Quentin Johnston, I'm not going to take him over Diggs or Tyreek Hill. You know, you mentioned it. Like everybody wants to have these assets that are 25, 26 years old and sometimes not even that old. Right. But look, the, the ceiling is way too high for these guys. And I know a lot of people, they, they preach and they are looking for consistency. I don't care about consistency that much. You look at guys like Tyree Kill and Stephon Diggs, they could win you a week. And yeah. so for, for those guys, Tyreek and Diggs, I, if again, I, I wouldn't necessarily go out and make a move now, Involving a mid first because I again I want to see where Sean Tucker goes sure. and and his draft capital and all that good stuff, but yeah they're in a tier above Cooper Cup and Adams for me. Yeah, I, I would I would tend to agree. I think that was well put that that 
you know, they, they can not only win you a week, but, you know, really help you drag you into a playoff mm-hmm. and, and win a playoff. Now, unfortunately, you know, Diggs wasn't great over this. They played in a ridiculous weather um, and Tyreek lost Tua. So, you know, that, that kind of stinks going into that. And that could put a bad taste into some people's mouths that those guys might even bounced him. Uh, you know, Tyreek w- was fine, but, uh, you know, so. I think we, we talk about it all the time just to reaffirm what I said, what you said, like the, the, the older guys really, really, really the value gets, gets, I think swept under the rug of, of, of how good. And like, I've sometimes I feel like nobody wants points on the team. They just want the guy who's 24. And I'm like, well, you know, I, I want to try to win. Um, I think, I think I, you're out of way to balance this out and, and, and be able to kind of do a little bit of both. And yeah, maybe I do have to eat shit for a year. Uh, but you know, that's kind of the goal to only, only have a, have a bad roster for a year. And then, you know, I did have a team that had Devonte Adams on it. And I sold them right at the end of last year. I've got four firsts and four seconds coming into this year. And I, you know, I, I was, you know, maybe uh, I probably missed the playoffs by I missed the playoffs by one game and by like eight points. And I wasn't even I wasn't trying to win this year. Like I was trying like I'm not not right. the lineup. I'm not that kind of guy. Um, you know, so I was setting my best lineup. You know, you can call me an idiot if you want. I just I can't do it. Um, and, you know, I was, I was, you know, seven and seven. And, and you know, Jay Wayne just beat me out to get into the playoffs in, in one of the older dynasty leagues that we have. Yeah, I'm, I'm just looking at points from this week for wide receivers and under 10 PPR points, Hollywood Brown, Michael Pittman, Mike Evans, Juju, Christian Kirk, Garrett Wilson, Stefan Diggs, Devonte Adams. Like there were guys that, that you were counting on. Like my, my win percentage uh, in week 15 and 16 this year in the absolute shitter. <laughs> it was just, I think I was at in week 16, I think I was between 35 and 40%. Yeah. And, and I'm not talking like my teams that just eked in. I'm talking my first round by teams yeah. getting smacked because uh, uh, fields and Tua in one league. And neither oh, of them really yeah. did much. Good luck. Yeah, that fucking is. T- I don't think Fields has put like less than twenty five up in a, in a minute, and you know, just just unfortunate, man. I mean, it's. I like to play in a lot of you know. Once we get in the playoffs, the first round, the first week is is still head to head with the first round buys, and then the last two weeks is cumulative points yeah. for the last two weeks. That way, you don't get one bad week doesn't ruin the whole the whole season. You got a hole to climb out of, but yeah, um, usually try to get in those. All right, buddy. Well, let's wrap up there. That's a good stopping point. We had, uh, you know, a whole nother sheet to get through, but that's, you know, that's just what we do. We get on here and we, you know, we chop it up and which is why I enjoy having you, you know, week in, week out uh, when we can get you. And, you know, it's, it's, it's easy. It's fun. I think we have a lot of good conversations, so appreciate you. Um, and, and maybe at some point we'll double back and get, get to some more of these guys. I'm sure we will. Yeah. I, I always laugh. Uh, when, when you're like, all right, JV, we're going to, we're going to talk about this, 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 and this. I'm like, we'll be lucky if we get through one of these topics <laughs> yeah. because no, be, because the, the conversation is so great with you guys. And, you know, you, you mentioned something or, or, uh, uh Matt or Jason or whoever. And I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I want to mention that. I, I know we stopped talking about this 10 minutes ago, but now that's in my head. Yeah. Um, so no, the throw the show sheet out the door because I think the conversation. Uh, maybe I'm biased, but I think it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, again, I appreciate you. I appreciate you coming on here. I appreciate you keeping me company because my guys were out of here. You can catch him on the Twitter at the Bauer Club. You can catch his fantasy football uh, dealing stylings chats uh, at the at Dynasty Theory FF. Um, and then, you know, on YouTube or I'm sure any of your platform of choice to to consume the podcast. Yes, sir. Yep. Every Tuesday night, nine o'clock Eastern, we're live on YouTube. And then wherever you listen to podcast, it's available shortly after that. And then I want to give a shout out to my co-host, Mick Sorensen at DinoMC on Twitter. And then Dan Lamonia at FF Coach Dan. Uh, not 
all that active on the Twitter verse these days, but we're all constantly available and having discussions in our Patreon on our discord. Yeah. So uh, be sure to join. Yeah. I'm over there. They're, they're, they're crushing it. They're crushing it. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Um, so, you know, like I said, hopefully soon we'll get the whole gang involved and we'll have a, a three on three, uh, you know, duel in a mock draft or something. And, and we'll each get a, you know, we'll each, We'll each have uh, two picks and, you know, th the six of us each having, a uh, you know, two picks in each round or whatever and, and maybe do one round. And then as we get a little further, maybe we'll do two rounds when we have enough information. Although it seems like you've really got it fucking dialed in already. You know, the, the I, joys of not having to actually watch anybody play football. Is, uh, I, I know, I know. Just <laughs> no, give just me kidding. my numbers and leave me alone. Yeah. Yeah. All right, buddy. Well, you know, hope you had a Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. Um, and we'll we'll be talking with you uh, in 2024 <laughs> or 2023. Uh, 20, what, what year is it? 2023. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. All right, Case. I appreciate you. All right, buddy.